the female reproductive system, ovaries are the site where each month an egg or ovum is released. It is also the site for release of hormones. In this video, we will talk about the process of oogenesis, which is development of mature oocytes within the ovaries. Let's look at the structure first. Now, the ovary is lined by cuboidal layer of epithelial cells. There are a number of oocytes surrounded by granulosa cell layer and an outer theca cell layer. The rest is ovarian stroma. The oocyte surrounded by granulosa and theca cell layer is what we call as the ovarian follicle. Now, the process of oogenesis begins in the intrauterine life of the female fetus itself. The gonads develop in the region of the gonadal ridge in posterior abdominal wall. Initially, at around five weeks of gestation, it's an indifferent gonad. The primordial germ cells, which are the future gametes, are identified first in the region of the yolk sac, from where they migrate to the developing gonad at around six weeks of gestation along the mesentery of the gut. Thereafter, the indifferent gonad forms the ovaries at around eight to ten weeks of gestation. So in the fetal ovaries, oocytes and follicles are developing simultaneously. So let's have a look at the region of the gonadal ridge. Now, the surface epithelium of the ovaries develops from the coelomic epithelium of the gonadal ridge. There are primordial germ cells here. We have mesenchymal cells which surround the oocytes to form the follicular cells. So we get the primary oocyte here. So talking about the oocyte development, we begin with a number of primordial germ cells which are deployed. They divide multiple number of times by mitosis to give rise to diploid oogonia, which further divide multiple number of times by mitosis to form the primary oocyte, which is again diploid. Now this primary oocyte enters the first meiotic division, gets surrounded by the follicular cells, but the process is further arrested in the diploid protein phase of prophase of the first meiotic division. Now this part of development takes place during the fetal life. Further development will resume only when puberty sets in and during the timing of ovulation. That is when the primary oocyte is going to complete its first meiotic division to give rise to a secondary oocyte containing half the number of chromosomes and the remaining half is released as the first polar body. Now, this secondary oocyte also enters the second meiotic division but gets arrested in the metaphase. And it is only when the sperms penetrate the egg during fertilization that the second meiotic division gets completed to release the mature oocyte and the second polar body. So from primary oocyte to mature oocyte, development takes place during the female reproductive years. During fetal life itself, the primary oocytes get organized into follicles. In the region of the ovarian cortex, we see a number of oogonia and a number of primary oocytes developing. There are mesenchymal cells, flat epithelial cells that are going to organize themselves around the developing oogonia and primary oocytes to form the ovarian follicle. Now, oogonia that fail to get encased within follicles undergo atresia. They simply die out. Having said that, a female is born with a finite number of oocytes or follicles within her ovaries. To get a perspective, let's look at a time scale of events. On the y-axis, let's take number in millions. And on the x-axis, let's take the weeks of gestation during fetal life. Life events like birth, let's say here, through the childhood years to puberty, let's say here, and then through the reproductive lifespan in the end to menopause, let's say here. Now, oogenesis begins at around six weeks of gestation and we get a number of oogonia, which appear first at around nine weeks of gestation, reaching a maximum of around six to seven million at around 20 weeks of gestation. Thereafter, the number rapidly declines.
Now, primary oocytes, they appear first at around 11 to 12 weeks of gestation. Follicle formation begins around 18 weeks of gestation and primary oocytes that are not encased in follicles, they undergo atresia. So at the time of birth, one is left only with 1 to 2 million primary oocytes. Atresia further continues and at the time of puberty, only 4 lakh primary oocytes remain and only about 400 ovulate during the entire reproductive lifespan. Ultimately, at the time of menopause, all oocytes and follicles have been depleted. So in the reproductive Reproductive lifespan for each egg released each month, thousand follicles die in the process.